There is no Alaskan fishing ship quite like it. This is a state-of-the-art fishing vessel. Built to handle hurricane force winds and crushing waves. Welcome to the Bering Sea, baby, yeah! Northern leader reels in some of the best cod on the planet. Perfect cod. But to reap the rewards of this rugged, powerful ship, Money here is really good. Probably the best you're gonna get legally. Watch it. It takes guts. Stamina. I'll sleep when I'm dead. And a serious oh. appetite for danger. Northern Leader is the biggest, toughest longliner in Alaska. Towing an astonishing 80-kilometer-long fishing line with 75,000 hooks. Every fish counts! Day or night, this ship powers through the roughest waters the Bering Sea can deliver, catching and freezing 750 tons of cod, pollock, and skate on each voyage. This boat is awesome. <laughs> Compared to most boats, this boat kicks ass. We never uh, worry about weather, we just fish straight through it. Us on the net. Alaska native Captain Sean Andrew drives his 56 meter long vessel through waves up to 10 meters high. Fishing day and night from the moment they hit the high seas. There's no better boat that I've ever been on. It's just built really stout. I mean, it, I've never seen anything like it. Hey, Gertz. So how's the gear look today? A little bit tore up, catching some fish. But all the hooks look hooks looking good? Yeah, the hooks are looking pretty good. With 25 years at the helm, Captain Andrew is part owner of Northern Leader and three other ships in the Alaskan Leader Fisheries Company fleet. Out of sea is where we're making money. He knows better than most that the Bering Sea calls for nerves of steel. 25 years of fishing, I've only shut down twice, and that was for winds in excess of 100 miles an hour, so. Some fishing vessels operate for a short season, but Northern Leader and its crew of 26 sailors fish all year round. We never have any downtime, unless there's a mechanical or something like that in town that we have to deal with. That's the only thing that will slow us down. Every one of Northern Leader's voyages begins 1,400 kilometers southwest of Anchorage in the small town of Dutch Harbor, fishing's gateway to the Bering Sea. The first task for lead foreman Justin Dill What's up, Marcus? is offloading the haul from the last voyage and preparing for the next one. So we try to get it offloaded and backloaded within 24 hours. Look it up. I mean, we're not making money unless we're catching the fish, so I'm definitely ready to get out there and so are the other guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They have to offload and restock by tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, Northern Leader falls behind schedule. Perfect. The frozen fish from the last trip rolls off the ship and into the warehouse. From here, it will be sent for processing, then shipped to supermarkets and restaurants around the world. Uh, 38,000 cases on board. Gray cod, skate, pollock, arrow tooth, uh, fish meal, fish heads. Come on, guys, let's go, come on. Up loud. So this is fish meal. This one here is about 19 kilos. Not only can you work out with it, but it's in your protein shake when you're done. Come on, here we go, yeah. Back on the ship, Captain Andrew makes room for a new state-of-the-art telecommunication system. This is our satellite uh, communications antenna that we're taking down, and we're replacing it with a new, more modern antenna. All communication flows through the satellite link, 
It's vital for downloading weather and for mandatory reports on the catch to fisheries regulators. So the other antenna doesn't have uh, rubber mounts on the bottom. Without a satellite link at sea, Northern Leader is simply not allowed to fish. By nightfall, Swing it. the new antenna is lifted into place. Okay, let's see, let's see we, how we do with just push the thing. Okay, I'm gonna get him to swing over, right? You got it? Okay, we gotta swing over. Well, it's up there. We didn't have any problems. Yeah, it went good, it went good. I like it. And it looks good. Did they reset? One did. Meanwhile, below deck, Chief Engineer Jesse Fogg is tackling a problem with the software that monitors the ship's engines. We can't fuel the boat without this running. Uh, we can't start anything without this, basically. This system monitors every engine parameter, reefer compressors, tank levels, everything on board. You know, it's all our alarms. So without this, we're basically blind. We gotta get to the bottom of this. All we can do now is uh, try to reset all the main switch, all the power to the, to the entire uh, system. Outside, the new antenna is secured to the ship, but it's not linking up to any satellites. Pop up, an hour and a half when this comes out, and so I'm gonna wait till it, like it's it took about absolutely. Electronics technician, Trevor Comstock, has to look at all the options. So at some point we gotta consider putting the KVH back on, you know, what was it, two minutes, port side over there. But there's no guarantee the old system will even work. Cable's over. Well, that'll be the last option. Last possible option, but all right. Back in the engine control room. He's asking what server. All right, here we are. We're booted up. I think we're in good shape. I think we'll get out of here in time. With the engine software working again, the ship can now be refueled. 38,000 blocks of frozen fish come off the vessel, and the provisioning for the next trip continues until dawn. With all the fish off the ship, a load of seafood now comes aboard. All right, I'm going to bait the bait freezer. It's frozen squid to be used as bait. Yeah, we'll cycle through it. We'll bring some out, thaw it out, bait it, set it, and do that all over again. With the bait on board, Jesse checks the machine that loads it on the hooks. This machine is you know, the heart and soul of the bow. 75,000 hooks are being pulled through this machine every single day. The machine baits four hooks a second and the entire 80 kilometer long line in just six hours. I'm simulating a hook being pulled through here. See the bait gets fed into the machine. Where it's cut by the knife and strategically placed. So the hook hits dead center on the piece of squid. And there we go, baited squid. And we're uh, ready to make money. After 25 hours in port, Northern Leader is almost ready to set sail. But the satellite link is still down. I've been working on this all night, and so far we haven't seen anything at all. Well, I'm frustrated by the stat system because it was supposed to be plug and play. All right, I'm going to hop on board and get going. The captain decides to move the vessel to another dock. There, he hopes the new antenna will connect to a satellite. Otherwise, Northern Leader isn't going anywhere.
The crew on Alaska's biggest longline fishing vessel is waiting to get out onto the Bering Sea to catch cod. I think I got a three-hour nap in in the last 48 hours, so I'm ready to do take off and start making some money. But Northern Leader can't head out to fish until its new satellite system works. We're still working on the uh, sat phone, so I wait for uh, Trevor to come back and tell me what the status on that is. Even at another dock, the ship's new antenna still won't link up to a satellite. So we put a lot of work into this thing up, up to now, but, but uh, man, I can't sit here forever. Captain Sean Andrew cannot afford to waste any more time. He decides to reconnect the old one. It's 8 p.m. when Northern Leader finally sets sail. From Dutch Harbor, Alaska, they will head 500 kilometers northwest to the fishing grounds near the Pribilof Islands. For the first leg of the run, most of the crew grab a quick bite and then head off to sleep. For the next four weeks, everyone will be working 17 hours a day, seven days a week. Late the next day, the ship reaches the fishing grounds. Here, the captain sets his course along a certain axis, north-south or east-west. Then the ship releases the fishing line. It makes several passes over a chosen fishing ground until the entire length of the line is laid out. Once I decide which direction to go, I just do it. Whatever, whatever comes with fish through it. Before Captain Andrew commits the full 80 kilometers of fishing line in this spot, he'll run a test line. It's really, you're going to know fairly quickly if, if it's good or not, so I don't really need that much gear to test the area. Inside the ship, the automatic baiting machine comes to life. The line falls off the stern and dives to the bottom of the sea, where cold water fish like cod and pollock gather. Started here, we set it up, turn, set down. It's a different approach to fishing than northern leaders' competitors, big factory trawlers that cast a large net down to the bottom. When you're gonna be on the bottom, Long line is, is, is the most eco-friendly way you can go. It's a line, it's, it just lands on the bottom and you pick it up and it doesn't harm anything. Bottom trawl is, is, can be very destructive to the bottom. I think it's a much better way to go as far as harvesting codfish. A number of tools help locate the fish. Well, I have my plotters, it's where I can basically look at the fishing grounds I'm working on. I've got sounders for, you know, fi sounders, fish finders for depth, depth sounding. After an hour of laying out the line, the captain begins to haul it in. And then as I haul the gear, I'm counting fish and I'm taking weights. And that's how I make a judge of what, where I'm going to set the gear the next day. I'm looking for the concentration of fish. The line is reeled in on the starboard side of the ship into an area the crew calls the pit. How's my gaff looking? Here, two deckhands go to work using a large gaff hook and a dip net. At the roller, the deckhand must gaff each fish to bring it aboard. You have to gaff the fish before it hits the roller. If it hits the roller, it's gonna pop off. It, pin it pinches it right there between the line and the roller. You wanna bring it up and over. This ensures the flesh is not bruised or damaged as the card is pulled up. This job is probably the most important on the boat. It's where all the money comes from. This is where it starts. 
The man on the roller is also on the lookout for the species of fish Northern Leader doesn't want to haul in. It's called bycatch. General hook and line fishing in the Bering Sea has very little bycatch. Um, we catch a, a little bit of halibut, that halibut is released. It's another advantage long lining has over the trawlers and their big nets. The fish is flying, goes back over, survives without any issue at all. That can't be said for other fisheries. Deckhand Mike Johnson knows the pit is the most dangerous place to be on the ship. You got to focus on fish coming up. At the same time, in rough weather, you got to be able to keep your head on a swivel and be able to predict what waves and what's going to roll over the rail. Watch it. On the cold December seas, Carlos, the deckhand working the dip net, watches out for Mike. You gotta be quick, you gotta keep an eye out for the wave from the roller guy, because he has his head down, it's pretty dangerous out there. In the wheelhouse, the captain checks the data from the test line. This is disappointing. We're just not seeing what we need to see. And, they, and in, in the area where we've seen fish, it's just a little bit too small. The livelihood of the crew depends on the number of fish the sailors catch. Yeah, we definitely need to get out of here. This is not where we need to be anymore. With the paychecks of all 26 crew members based on a percentage of the total haul, a small catch makes everyone worry. Everybody on board is paid percentage, so we want to come out, we want to run a highly efficient show, catch as many fish as possible per day. We're going to be moving north, northwest. It's time for Northern Leader to move on, to find the fish and start making some money. After 10 hours, the ship reaches its next fishing spot. Now, currently we're about 20 minutes from getting ready to set right now. Below deck, another shift begins. Good morning, gentlemen. It's time to get up. It's the middle of the night, but for these deckhands, it's the start of a 17-hour shift. something and I'm going straight outside. Probably about 70 degrees in my bunk when I wake up and five, ten minutes later I'm outside and it's negative 20. Mike only has a few minutes to eat. I usually bring someone else down with me afterwards so I can hold me over. It's my next meal is going to be breakfast. That's eight to ten hours from now. With high winds and cold temperatures, Mike dresses warmly. Pretty cold, probably snow and ice. You guys ready to go? The whole crew are now ready to get to work. It takes six hours for the full length of the line to be set in place. Then the hard part begins. Okay, so here we are at the rock pile, just getting ready to begin hauling gear. As the line is hauled in, Northern Leader's special propellers work hard to keep the ship on course. Most other fishing vessels have a single propeller connected to a drive shaft, steered by a rudder. Northern Leader's two propellers are mounted on electric pods, called Z-drives, that automatically adjust the steering to keep clear of the line as it's hauled in. We're the only fishing vessel in the United States with this setup. It's very efficient. It's very good for maneuverability, and it's a great fit for a uh, long-line fishing vessel. The Z-drives don't just help steer the ship. 
they can also automatically keep the ship moving forward at a consistent speed. If you can't hold a steady speed, you're going to get a lot of balled up gear, messed up books. It's, it really becomes a nightmare. When the Z-Drives are set to power mode, the propellers speed up or slow down in response to sudden halts and surges from wind and waves. And Northern Leader's speed stays constant, like the cruise control on a car. The beauty of this system is we can incrementally add or remove power depending on the demand from the wheelhouse. The only reason we can set gear into these conditions is we have the, the Z-Drives and the uh, power mode feature and uh, helps us control a consistent speed into the seas. Mike has signed on for three consecutive trips aboard Northern Leader. I think last three and a half years I've probably spent at least three quarters of it on the boat at sea. That much time at sea can be hard on the body and on the mind. And you gotta be mentally tough, that's, that's the biggest thing. And being able to compartmentalize homes over here and, and works here and you gotta focus on work. For these sailors, the pay is worth the hardship. If the catch is good, a deckhand like Mike can earn up to $15,000 in this four-week long trip. That's what it's all about, make your money. Luckily, the cod are coming in thick and fast. By morning, it looks like they're making up for lost time. We're seeing big legs rolling around out there and a lot of fish coming up. Get your heart pumping, that's for sure. Come out here, I'm trying to get every single fish I can on the boat. Just like in basketball, you try to make as many shots as possible. In the factory below deck, the crew feverishly keeps pace with the quantity of fish coming in. They come in through this uh, hole right here in the side of the boat and up to the bleeder station. Here, each cod is cut at the neck. Then each fish is weighed on the flow scale. The total weight of the catch is sent to the government authorities, who strictly regulate the amount of fish the ship is allowed to catch in a year. After being weighed, the cod are immediately bled. Uh, the bleeding is to keep the meat a lot wider. So Jamie, how's it going up there? A lot of pilots. Definitely some money fish here. Uh, we've done six tons of fish so far this morning, which is a really good number for us, you know. How you doing? You doing all right? Justin will be at sea for another four months, even if it means missing the birth of his second child. I'll be home about three months after he's born. It's life of the fishing industry, you know. Sometimes you gotta miss uh, big moments in life. Being away from family, you got a girlfriend, or serious relationship, that's yeah. usually, it's usually what gets you. I, I try to tell new guys, you know, Come up single next time if you can. You can help it because it ain't worth it. It ain't worth the heartbreak. Below deck in the engine room. Uh, it's not good. Uh, it's starting to warm up already. Things are already starting to heat up. There's a serious problem with one of the propulsion units. Uh, she's already starting to warm up. I got to get this changed out. Uh, try to baby that in the meantime. All right, thanks. Uh, Port Z-Drive's got a cooling pump that is out, and right now, uh, Jess is working on it. We've got to get it wired up and installed. Losing a pump could lead to overheating of the propulsion unit. On stormy seas, that spells disaster. lost our cooling pump for our port propulsion. 
course, worst time possible. It's blowing at least 40 mile an hour right now, close to 50. The captain needs that power right now to stay on the line, keep those guys in the pit safe. Without the ability to keep the ship clear of the line, Northern leaders' winning streak might just be coming to a sudden, frosty end. Next. Jesse and engineer assistant Francis Rapunte have only 10 minutes to replace the pump's motor before the propulsion unit overheats. We've got to get it wired up and installed before they lose propulsion. Okay, so there's our three lines. Uh, we got to match up the numbers so the rotation is correct. Got on some good fishing, got some nice big size uh, caught. We're gonna fish through the night. Jesse and Francis connect the new pump just in time. The whole situation could have been bad. They would have lost their falchion up there, they could have got off the line, they could have got side two, waves could have been breaking in the pit. But uh, we got it done in time and and everything's good. By morning, Northern Leader has caught more fish than anyone expected. After two hours on the roller, Mike heads inside, not for a break, but to help process the massive catch. So much fish coming up right now, I'm not even going outside. No time. We need everybody we can get in the factory right now. We are on overflow once again. The best problem to have. Gotta go, go, go! It was surprised to see the 17 hour cases that we got yesterday. Uh. The cases are filling up the ship's freezer hold. Not just with the flesh of the cod, but with other parts too. We use every part of the fish. Fish stomachs are sold to markets in Asia, while cod livers are used to make omega-3 supplements. They put the stomachs and the livers in a separate tub down below by their feet and throw the rest of the guts into, the, into a gut tank. Uh, then they toss the fish into what we call the wash tank. Let's go, 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 go! Come on, get those fish! Even the fish heads don't go to waste. This is the fish meal. Fish meal is ground up fish heads and other various fish products from the cod itself. Uh, you can find this stuff in candies, uh, protein shakes, dog and cat food. The captain comes down to inspect the day's spectacular haul. We're going to be over 40 tons for the day, so it's probably, it'll be one of the better catch days of the year, quite frankly. He then heads over to the galley to sample some of the catch. Hello, guys. My name is Johnny Utah. Northern leader's cook, Johnny Utah, spends 10 months of the year aboard the ship. A little too wild for the civilized world, so I hide myself in the, in the high seas. We have vegetables, we have a soup, we do have cod, freshly caught cod this morning. Uh, we're doing the cod recipe that belongs to the captain's family. Well, how'd it turn out, Johnny? It turned out very well. Looks good. It's a top secret. I'm the only one with the recipe, nobody else. Fresh cod, less than four hours old. Best protein you can get. It doesn't get any better than that. While the captain sits down for his favorite dinner, up in the wheelhouse, mate James Showland is eyeing a powerful storm moving towards the Bering Sea. We have the forecast for night, looking possible gusts of 65 out of the east. We'll be basically right in the track line of the storm. 
basically has an eye like a hurricane. Uh, so it's a pretty well-developed, low-pressure system. Um, we'll try to fish, but we're going to have to see, see how bad it really gets. Since the ship first set sail three years ago, Northern Leader has never stopped fishing because of bad weather. Yeah, time's everything. When I'm out here, I want to make money. The crew wants to make money. It's my job to, to help these guys make money, so I got to keep an eye on the clock and make sure that we don't waste any time. With everyone's paycheck tied to the size of the catch, no one is keen to stop fishing. But Northern Leader has never been in a storm this powerful before. Uh, this is tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. These arrows represent the direction of the wind. The color represents the intensity. So pink is over 40 knots. The deckhands aren't looking forward to the chaos that may come in just a few short hours. Flying everywhere, 60, 70 mile an hour winds, 30 foot seas. So it's going to get pretty nasty. The approaching storm will put everyone to the test. Right now, though, there is a more immediate concern in the factory. Uh, I got a hydraulic leak going on right now. I've got the chiefs that are on their way. Justin calls in the engineers for help. I've had to shut down all the hydraulics in the factory. I uh, can't move any fish right now with the uh, hydraulics leaking. Yeah, it's a really bad situation. You know what hose it is? Uh, I'm not sure what hose it is. The factory conveyor belts are at a standstill on one of the best fishing days of the year. This one right here. Yeah, they're right in the middle of cutting fish. We got a ton of fish today. All right, let's do it. Shutting down a factory, overflowing with fresh fish, even for a few minutes, is nerve-wracking. Outside, the fishing continues. Inside, the work just piles up. Fortunately, we run uh, all food-grade, biodegradable hydraulic fluid. Makes things a lot easier to work with. All right. Let's wipe her clean. How's it look, Curtis? No leaks? No leaks, we're good. All right, nice. Guess they can get back to business here. Okay, they said before, I think this is... Upstairs, Captain Andrew informs the crew that the approaching storm has been upgraded to a hurricane. In a couple hours here, it's going to be whipping up pretty good. Tearing northeast across the Bering Sea, this monster will bring waves 11 meters high and winds in excess of 60 knots or 110 kilometers per hour. Yeah, it, it, it's just a matter of how far north it comes, if it's going to hit us full on or, or not. Northern Leader may be the biggest vessel in its class, but the ship is still just 56 meters long. Her captain is confident that they can cope with the toughest of conditions. We just need to be really prepared, and um, if, it, if we get the full effect of it, well, we're, on, we're definitely on a good boat, that's for sure. While other ships seek shelter from the storm, Northern Leader will fish right through it. Well, some other vessels uh, in the Bering Sea will most likely be running for cover behind the islands. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to stay here at our area. Below deck, Jesse begins securing equipment. He starts in the engine room. It's going to get real nasty tonight, tomorrow, all weekend. We're going to batten down all the hatches, make sure everything's uh, nice and chip shape and uh, power through this storm. All the fish are picked up underneath. Right. Eye on the sump pumps, make sure no water levels get built up. You know, let me know right away. We'll be right up and take care of it. Okay. Thanks, buddy. So in the factory, there's, you know, you have the header with the blades, you have the people with knives, and I mean, there's all sorts of different things that can fly off of a shelf, uh, bars that are hanging out. So people really got to watch their step. 
So let's just 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 process, get cleaning, do as much grind as we can do. Okay. The deckhands preparing to brave the elements are gathered to warn them of the dangers they're about to face. So the weather is uh, bad, as you guys know. Don't stand right behind the door because we're going to have waves breaking in. We're going to be in a following sea, so we want to be really careful. Everyone must carry a knife for emergencies. Here, all the buoys are going to be set off the starboard side. We're not going to go to the port side to be a little bit safer. If anything happens, make sure I want to see knife belts on just like this, like he's wearing his right here. We're not in a rap video, so get that thing up before you can use it, all right? All you guys. So if you're going up and doing a mid buoy, have knives where you can use it. If anything happens, cut the line right away. Deckhand Tim Hoisington will also be working the dip net, and he too is bracing for nasty weather. The ocean's unpredictable, I and mean, a lot of lot can happen. Like you never know when you can just go overboard, or when a rope wave can just come up, or just anything. I love it outside. No matter how rough it is, I still love it. We're getting there. The captain maneuvers the ship to protect the pit from the worst of the wind and swells. I set up for the weather, so this allowed me to haul back to the east and then, t and then to tack down to the south. That allowed me to keep the guys out of the weather. So, so far it's worked really well. But the ship is increasingly turbulent. The winds pick up in intensity. With powerful waves rocking the ship, Mike and Tim struggle to bring the fish aboard. In the factory, the crew are having trouble staying on their feet amidst wild pitching and rolling of the vessel. Northern leader is now headed straight into the worst of the storm. The wind and waves rise higher and higher. We got uh, 50 knots plus right now out of the east. Definitely 25 footers every now and then. That's the ones that get us. So every now and then it just blows us over. So we're just trying to stay on the gear. And I'm, I'm hauling actually quite slow to keep these guys in the lead at the moment. So it's. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not fun, and they're taking a lot of water. They get so much spray at the roller, it just, it just sprays up their face. It's really hard for them to see. Oh, what was that? Oh, Out in the middle of the Bering Sea, a massive wave has just crashed into the pit of Northern Leader. There's no sign of Tim who was working the dip net. On the bridge, the captain immediately radios below deck. Hey, check out the dip netter. He just got hit by a wall of water. Fortunately, Tim is safe. The wave knocked him off his feet and slammed him around the pit. He's still dazed, but amazingly hasn't been seriously hurt. Honestly, I just remember a big wave coming in, and that's the next thing I know I'm doing back to the door. And that's the last thing I remember. And yeah, it's like brick walls, like semi-trucks just hitting you with water. Yeah. I got I got that. And uh, got some on my, my butt cheek, but I can't really show that on the camera. And I got my head right here. Kind of, you kind of see a little bruise, but I, just, I think I got knocked out a little bit because I don't, don't remember anything. 
Tim knows it could have been a lot worse. But he usually just went overboard and they wouldn't even know. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Hey, I'm still a little bit shaken up yet. The winds are now gusting over 50 knots. Justin, give me a call. But having worked in the pit himself, the captain knows what to do to keep on fishing. But it's just too dangerous right now to have a dip nutter. Um, the gaffer is a little bit more protected. He can tuck around the corner and get away from the swell that's swooping around the, the bow there. In this extreme weather, only one man will work in the pit. He'll do a shorter shift of 30 minutes on the roller before another deckhand will take his place. Up on the bridge, the captain watches the crew in the pit closely. We haven't seen the end of it. We've probably got uh, four or five more hours. With this determined attitude, the catch continues to grow. Excellent fishing day. We're over 25 tons right now. On any other fishing ship, weather in the seas like this would have shut them down by now. I've only shut down twice in my career. Northern Leader never has. It's past 50 knots. It is the only boat to be on. There's a serious incentive to push on. Northern Leader's freezer is filling up fast. We don't got that far to go, so, you know, we have some weather at this point, but we'd like to try to keep pushing on through and, and get it done. For the next few hours, Northern Leader continues to haul in the fish. Riding the storm until morning. Over the next week, the weather improves and the fishing gets even better. Nine. Smoking hot fish on this trip, it's been really exciting to just really get on the fish like that. Uh, freezer's just about full. So the bigger the fish, the more money you get. Over the next couple of weeks, Northern Leader fills its hold to capacity. I like competition. I like seeing how quick, you know, quickly I can fill the vessel, and I like beating the rest of our vessels. <laughs> I mean, I really do. Northern Leader and Secure performed excellent this trip. After four perilous weeks at sea, the biggest longliner in Alaska heads back to port. We're going to steam to Dutch Harbor, full speed. Ready to unload a huge $2 million worth of the finest cod, skate, and pollock. We're going to turn this thing around and get it headed right back out to the Bering Sea. And just 24 hours later, this mighty ship and its crew will be back out doing what they do best. The Northern Leader just goes and goes and goes. Fishing the turbulent, unpredictable and wild waters of the Bering Sea. We swap open seas for crowded platforms next on Quest. Exploring the working world of those who keep passengers moving. Or not, as the case may be sometimes. On the Tube. There is no Alaskan fishing ship quite like it. This is a state-of-the-art fishing vessel. Built to handle hurricane force winds and crushing waves. Welcome to the Bering Sea, baby, yeah! Northern Leader reels in some of the best cod on the planet. Perfect cod. But to reap the rewards of this rugged, powerful ship, 
Money here is really good. Probably the best you're going to get legally. Watch it. It takes guts. Stamina. I'll sleep when I'm dead. And a serious oh. appetite for oh. danger. Northern Leader is the biggest, toughest longliner in Alaska. Towing an astonishing 80 kilometer long fishing line with 75,000 hooks. Every fish counts! Day or night, this ship powers through the roughest waters the Bering Sea can deliver. Catching and freezing 750 tons of cod, pollock and skate on each voyage. This boat is awesome. <laughs> Compared to most boats, this boat kicks ass. We never uh, worry about weather, we just fish straight through it. It's us on the net. Alaska native Captain Sean Andrew drives his 56 meter long vessel through waves up to 10 meters high. Fishing day and night from the moment they hit the high seas. There's no better boat that I've ever been on. It's just built really stout. I mean, it, I've never seen anything like it. Hey, Gertz. So how's the gear look today? A little bit tore up. Catch it good. But all the hooks, look, hooks looking good? Yeah, the hooks are looking pretty good. With 25 years at the helm, Captain Andrew is part owner of... There is no Alaskan fishing ship quite like it. This is a state-of-the-art fishing vessel. Built to handle hurricane force winds and crushing waves. Welcome to the Bailey Sea, baby, yeah! Northern Leader reels in some of the best cod on the planet. Perfect cod. But to reap the rewards of this rugged, powerful ship... Money here is really good. Probably the best you're gonna get legally. Watch it. It takes guts. Still a separate some men from the boys right here. Stamina. I'll sleep when I'm dead. And a serious oh. appetite for danger. Northern Leader is the biggest, toughest longliner in Alaska. Towing an astonishing 80 kilometer long fishing line with 75,000 hooks. Every fish counts! Day or night, this ship powers through the roughest waters the Bering Sea can deliver. Catching and freezing 750 tons of cod, pollock and skate on each voyage. This boat is awesome. <laughs> Compared to most boats, this boat kicks ass. We never uh, worry about weather, we just fish straight through it. It's us on the net. Alaska native Captain Sean Andrew drives his 56 meter long vessel through waves up to 10 meters high. Fishing day and night from the moment they hit the high seas. There's no better boat that I've ever been on. It's just built really stout. I mean, it, I've never seen anything like it. Hey, Gertz. So how's the gear look today? A little bit tore up. Catch it good. But all the hooks, look, hooks looking good? Yeah, the hooks are looking pretty good. With 25 years at the helm, Captain Andrew is part owner of Northern Leader and three other ships in the Alaskan Leader Fisheries Company fleet. 